So today we'll go through a few MCQs on thoracic wall. So first one sternal angle corresponds to dash vertebra. Which vertebra? It is a lower border of T4. Okay. Lower border of T4 vertebra. And name five events that occur at sternal angle. Just answered it. Uh, five events. One. Second coastal cartilage gets getting attached at that level. Then arch of iota begins at that level. Arch of iota ends at that level. Then then you find thoracic duct will be crossing behind the esophagus from right to left at that level. Okay. Then the sternal angle, that imaginary line passing through the sternal angle will divide superior mediastinum from inferior mediastinum. One more uh, transition or one more change event occurs at that sternal angle in relation to dermatome. Can you say that? Above the sternal angle, what is the dermatomal supply? It is C4. And below the sternal angle, the dermatome is T2. So, at the level of sternal angle, you find a discontinuous dermatome, C4 above. And after that, what happens is C4 dermatome just above the sternal angle. And then C5 to T1 will form the brachial plexus so as to supply the upper limb. And thus, just below that, you get T2. So, these are some of the events that occurs at sternal angle. So, look at that. In that figure, you are seeing that imaginary plane <coughs> dividing the mediastinum, <coughs> sorry, into superior mediastinum and inferior mediastinum. Okay. Other events also. And it is, what do you mean by sternal ang angle actually? It is the manubrium is actually meeting at the body of the sternal at sternal angle. And you will see the second coastal cartilage to which the second rib is attached is at that level. <coughs> then name the boundaries of thoracic inlet. What are the boundaries of thoracic inlet? In front you have the upper border of manubrium, behind T1 vertebra and on either side first rib. So why this thoracic inlet is so important is you find a uh, applied aspect there often described as thoracic inlet syndrome where certain structures could be collapsed leading to different manifestations in the patient. So these are the boundaries in, from ster in front sternum behind thoracic T1 vertebra and on either side you find the uh, first rib. So in the center you find the two main tubes that is the trachea and just behind that the esophagus. And on either side of it, you find the two lung, the apex of the lung covered with cervical pleura, which is in turn covered with suprapleural membrane or Simpson's fascia. Okay. So these are the structures, main structures. Plus, of course, you find important uh, vessels there related to the thoracic inlet. Which of the following is a typical intercostal lung? You see one? It's a fourth thoracic. Why you say fourth thoracic? Because for you to say a nerve as a typical intercostal nerve, it should be confined entirely or exclusively to the thoracic wall. First thoracic, you can't say it is to the thorax, confined to the thoracic wall. Why? Because it is forming brachial plexus, the ventral ram. One is to brachial plexus. Then B. Second thoracic is also not a typical intercostal nerve. Why? Because it is forming intercostal or, or sec lateral cutaneous branch of the second thoracic nerve is forming intercostal brachial nerve, which of course has got a small innervation in the upper limb. So second thoracic can't be considered as a typical intercostal nerve. Seventh thoracic, no. Why? Because it has got innervation in the abdomen, abdominal wall. So, fourth thoracic is a typical intercostal nerve. Which of the following are typical intercostal spaces? Very easy one. Which one? It is third to sixth. Internal thoracic artery is a branch of. What is it? Internal thoracic artery is a branch of. First part of subclavian artery. You know subclavian artery? You know arch of iota? Arch of iota gives three main branches. You learn later. One is brachiocephalic trunk, left subclavian 
left common carotid so these are the three branches you get from uh, arch of aorta brachiocephalic trunk left common carotid subclavian this brachiocephalic trunk again is divided into a right subclavian and right common carotid okay so what happens is this subclavian artery will be divided by one muscle in the neck termed as the scalenus anterior into three parts first part second part third part just like your axillary artery do you remember axillary artery is being divided by your uh, pectoralis minor into three three parts just like that subclavian artery is being divided by your scalenus anterior muscle to three part first part second part third part so you get certain branches coming from first part some from the second part some from the third part so from the first part of subclavian you get three branches and you remember it as vit v i t v is for vertebral artery i is for internal thoracic or internal mammary artery they are the same internal thoracic or internal mammary and t is for thyro cervical trunk so these are the three branches you get from the first part of subclavian one vertebral artery then internal thoracic artery then thyro cervical artery just for completion sake i'll say this thyro cervical artery is again divided into three branches they are sit s i t remember it as s i t s is for suprascapular artery i is for inferior thyroid artery t is for transverse cervical artery some branches of this you have learned while you are studying upper limb do you remember that so internal thoracic artery is a branch coming from the first part of subclavian now name its terminal branches and the level of termination the terminal branches are can you name the musculophrenic artery and superior epigastric artery this level of termination is at the sixth space sixth intercostal space so you have seen uh, when you are viewing the dissection videos you must have seen internal thoracic artery when you cut across the rib cage and retract it on the anterior wall just close to the sternum on either side is internal thoracic artery so look at that uh, what you are seeing here is you are viewing the sternum from behind so you are viewing sternum from behind and on either side you are seeing the internal thoracic artery it's passing down reaching the sixth space dividing into superior epigastric and musculophrenic artery you see it's coming from first part of subclavian artery okay left superior intercostal vein drains into dash and right superior intercostal vein drains into dash can you give the answer look at that you should be familiar with the drainage of posterior intercostal veins so what happens is on right side and left side this posterior intercostal veins shows a peculiar drainage on right side look at that it's the right first posterior intercostal vein will drain look at that it is draining into right brachiocephalic left side also it is draining into left what you see is second third and fourth will join together to form the right and left superior intercostal veins so on right side this right superior intercostal vein you are seeing second third and fourth will join together to form the right superior intercostal vein which will drain into ascygos vein look at that it is draining into ascygos vein but on left side the second third and fourth join together to form the left posterior left superior intercostal vein which drains into left brachiocephalic vein so that is the difference right side it is draining into ascygos vein left side it is draining into left brachiocephalic vein you got it you are seeing the right and left brachiocephalic are joining to form the superior vena cava it is into the superior vena cava you find the ascygos vein is draining okay so that is some uh, points that you should remember about this posterior intercostal and superior intercostal veins hope it's clear to you now left superior intercostal vein drains into what is the left brachiocephalic right superior intercostal vein drains into ascygos vein
order of arrangement of structures of neurovascular bundle in a typical intercostal space very easy in the coastal groove what is the arrangement of structures it is the van arrangement from above downwards first vein then intercostal artery then intercostal nerve so that is the van arrangement from above downwards intercostal vein artery and nerve look at that it is a coastal groove you are seeing there you are very clearly seeing the structures first vein artery now van arrangement anterior intercostal membrane is a continuation of dash muscle it is the external intercostal muscle and posterior intercostal membrane is a continuation of dash muscle it is the next muscle what what is that after external you get internal can you just name the intercostal muscles the intercostal muscles are three in number one is external then you have internal and third one is innermost innermost and what you see here is this external intercostal muscle external intercostal muscle you find it in the intercostal space and you find in the anterior part the direction is just uh, as if you put your hands in the pocket that is downwards and medially okay and once this external intercostal muscle reaches the anterior part it is replaced there by a membrane termed as the anterior intercostal membrane just inner to that you find the next muscle that is the internal intercostal muscle and one thing you have to remember is this internal intercostal muscle will be at right angles to this external muscle okay it's right angle so once this internal reaches the posterior part it will be replaced by a membrane there termed as the posterior intercostal membrane still inner to that you find the innermost so always remember the internal and the innermost will be of the same direction both will be in the same direction and these two will be separated by the neurovascular bundle okay direction of fibers will be same for the innermost and the internal and you find the neurovascular bundle will be running in between these two muscles okay so see that you are seeing three muscles there the anterior part you find the external muscle replaced anteriorly by the anterior intercostal membrane then the internal replaced posteriorly by the posterior intercostal membrane intercostal neurovascular bundle is located between dash and dash muscles i have already told just answer me it is between the internal and innermost in upper six spaces anterior intercostal arteries are branches from dash can you answer it in the upper six spaces they are the branches coming from internal thoracic artery so look at that look at that figure you are seeing subclavian artery from the first part of subclavian artery you are seeing the internal thoracic artery coming it is reaching the sixth space and then dividing into superior epigastric and musculophrenic artery so look at that in the upper six spaces it is coming from internal thoracic or internal mammary artery which one anterior intercostal arteries in the lower three spaces it is coming from musculophrenic artery posterior intercostal artery in the fourth space is a branch of what so we have discussed anterior intercostal arteries in the upper six spaces anterior intercostal artery were branches of what all branches of upper six spaces it is branches of internal thoracic or internal mammary artery lower three musculophrenic so posterior intercostal arteries in the fourth space it is branch coming from descending thoracic aorta the lower nine spaces it is coming from the thoracic aorta look at that you find the arch of aorta arch of aorta continuing down as descending thoracic aorta this descending thoracic aorta will pass through the diaphragmatic opening in the, the diaotic opening in the diaphragm and then continue as the abdominal aorta so this descending thoracic aorta gives many branches out of this one branch is this posterior intercostal artery to the lower nine spaces in the upper space their branches coming from the uh, costal cervical trunk okay anterior intercostal vein drains into just like that artery where does it drain to it should drain into superior 
uh, internal mammary artery sorry drain into internal thoracic or internal mammary artery and musculophrenic not artery i'm sorry anterior intercostal vein so it should draining into internal thoracic vein and musculophrenic vein right just like the artery counterpart drainage of posterior intercostal veins in all spaces i think we have covered it once just look at that figure and answer right side first one right brachiocephalic vein left side left brachiocephalic vein second third and fourth joining together to form the on right side right superior intercostal vein draining into what a zygous vein left side draining into brachiocephalic vein and below that on right side all other spaces will drain into a zygous vein left side you see it is from 5 to 8 draining into accessory hemiocygos vein and below that from 9 to 11 it is draining into hemiocygos vein so in short right side a cygo system of veins are there left side accessory hemiocygos and hemiocygos system of veins are there thoracic inlet leads to compression of which all structures many structures out of this two important structures one subclavian artery the thoracic inlet usually uh, syndrome usually occurs in certain conditions such as a cervical rib cervical this is a picture showing a cervical rib is there you can compress many structures or it could be hypertrophied scalenous anterior then what happens is if these structures the structure that is very closely related to that is the subclavian artery subclavian artery is compressed it often uh, leads to decreased supply to the upper limb okay and when you verify for the radial pulse that will be weakened and the next structure that could be compressed is the brachial plexus the lower trunk of the brachial plexus also could be affected leading to manifestations when the uh, lower trunk is compressed then a zygous vein drains into very simple answer it superior vena so I think we finish uh, the MCQs. Most of you have answered it well. Uh, whatever you have gone wrong, read the topic and then answer. Okay. So thank you.